Okay, so today I'm going to go over what I believe to be a non-insignificant design issue with the Bose QuietComfort headphones. So this is the new one that has come out and according to their website, this is supposed to replace the QC45, which is a bit surprising to me. And it's also indicated by the fact that they've discounted the prices on their QC45 and also the Bose 700, which I actually thought the Bose 700 was pretty good for a noise cancelling headphone. It had issues in the treble, of course, but... Uh, you know, it didn't have the issues that this one has. The issue was so bad that I ended up sending it back uh, to get a replacement unit, and the replacement unit has the same issue. So, in this video, we're gonna get into that. We bought this headphone with the intention of doing a full review. I took them out of the box, and as part of my process for evaluating headphones, I listened to them first before doing the measurements. Uh, I feel it's important to do that, and when I listened to them, I immediately noticed that there's a significant channel imbalance, like a very noticeable audible channel imbalance, uh, to the point where I thought maybe there's something wrong with the setting, maybe there's something wrong, you know, with the positioning or the seating on my head, um, and then measured them, and sure enough, this is one of the most intense channel imbalances that I've seen in a headphone, enough to where I thought this is probably not representative, it's probably one of them that fell through the cracks, and we got a faulty unit. So, I sent it back and we immediately got a replacement. Sure enough, the second unit exhibits essentially the same issues. Um, and it's quite interesting actually, because it's not even that they have bad tolerances for their channel matching, even though, I mean, in practice, that's the result. It's that the channel imbalance is consistent for both units. So the left channels for both units measure pretty similarly to one another, and the right channels for both units measure pretty similarly to one another as well. And that means that the channel imbalance here, it's not just luck of the draw or bad luck in, in our case for the first unit. The fact that this headphone behaves like this for multiple units and specifically the way that it happens uh, is in my mind indicative of a faulty design or a design where basically the idea of having good channel matching is just completely thrown out the window. So we'll dive into that. Let's get into the graphs right away here and I will show you guys this. Once again, if you're new to reading graphs done like this, I've done a video on how to read this, how to make sense of this and why it makes sense to show it like this. The shaded area here is essentially the preference window or the preference boundaries for the established preference groups from the Harmon research. I, I also hear you guys, we will be figuring out a way to add uh, raw measurements back into this so that we can show both raw measurements and the compensated ones, uh, especially for educational purposes, but we also need to ensure that the preference boundaries carry with it because that's fairly important. And the big thing with this is that we don't want it to be compared to other raw measurements that have been done on other rigs because that is not compatible. You cannot do with raw measurements what you think you can do with raw measurements, okay? Let let that be very clear. <laughs> In any case, what you're looking at here for the Bose QuietComfort headphones is the left and right channels. These are averages. Eventually, again, with this new visualization for the data, we want to also show positional variation. Um, but we don't have that built yet into the system, so that's coming. But as you guys can see, the channel matching here is particularly bad. This is a shame because for its wideband, the overall wideband tuning, it's actually not bad. Like, it's definitely bass boosted, but, you know, for the rest of the tuning, it falls within the preference bounds for most of it. It's a bit V-shaped with extra bass and extra treble, but, you know, overall, this isn't that out of keeping with what most people prefer. And the other nice thing about this and, and I have to commend them here, is that even though the app-based EQ functionality is extremely limited, once again, and that's a major frustration for me with basically all wireless noise cancelling headphones, except for like one or two of them. But the nice thing about this one is that at 300 hertz, you, when you downshelf the bass, it actually downshelfs it from 300 hertz. Uh, and that's exactly where you would want to downshelf the bass. Uh, so you can actually affect the frequency range that is out of bounds here, uh, that is too much, that's gonna be perceived by most people as imbalanced. And it's not just like a peak filter or anything like that, it's just a complete down shelf, right at 300 hertz for, for, the, for where the bass filter is in the EQ app. So let me be very clear, if this headphone didn't have the channel balance issues that it shows here in the graph, I would actually say that this headphone is pretty good for, it's supposed to be kind of like the default noise canceling headphone that everybody gets, right? Like. It's one of the more ubiquitous ones. You see it everywhere. And I think, you know, for the tuning that they ended up here, you know, that they ended up going for here f for wideband is pretty good. Of course, it has these peaks and dips throughout. But 
the, the real issue here is the channel imbalance. And so how do I know that this isn't just down to one singular unit? Well, what I'm showing you on the graph here is this, that's this sample here, the second sample that I got. Let me show you the first sample that I got. So here is the first sample and you can see that it has the channel imbalance in the same spots. So let me just show you what the left channel for sample one compared to sample two looks like. And you can see, I mean, it's a little bit different there at around 2K, but the big peak shows up in the same spot for the left channel. And then let me show you the right channel for both units. And it's the same thing. So this is indicative of how they are doing something with the electronics in this headphone, because you're getting the same features across both units. So that's intentional. It has to be intentional. I mean, unless this is something where it is unique to a particular manufacturing run. This is an issue that really shouldn't exist with any headphone. Because if you think about it, you know, the other way, like what if this is just within their channel matching tolerances, that's really bad. <laughs> like if your channel matching tolerances allow for this, that's not good. So the takeaway here is that for sound quality, if you are at all bothered by channel imbalances, this one is worth staying away from. And this is a bit of a weird one because I think if people aren't really paying that close attention to where the channel matching is, maybe it won't be that bothersome. But I think for anybody who actually notices this, and it's one of those things where it's like once you notice it, you can't you can't unhear it. You can't go back to you can't be that sweet summer child <laughs> before hearing that. Once you hear it, it's in there and you just you fixate on it and it's super annoying. So this is something where I hope they fix it with a firmware update, because if they do, then for much of the rest of the wideband effect, like I mentioned, it's not bad at all. Like the, the overall tonal balance, uh, you know, for the relationship between bass, mids and treble is reasonable. It's obviously bass boosted, uh, but you can tone that down if you want to, and you can tone it down very effectively. The EQ function is in the right spot, like I mentioned. Um, and so if it weren't for this channel imbalance issue, I'd say actually this is reasonable for this type of device. Now for the rest of it, uh, let's talk about the noise canceling here. The noise cancelling is good, I found. I don't have, again, the full setup to do, you know, the, the proper noise cancelling measurements. Uh, I'm going to work towards that, but I'm going to show you guys here something that is at least indicative of the amount that it is attenuating. Uh, and so you can see that here. The key thing here is that there's no background hiss. I found that with the Sennheiser Accentum, there was background hiss. Uh, and I feel like in, in this day and age, you shouldn't have any, right? Like there's no excuse. Uh, background hiss is just not acceptable in headphones. Uh, and this one doesn't have any. So thumbs up there for, for noise canceling and background hiss. Also for comfort, this is great. Uh, they call it the quiet comfort and uh, yeah, it doesn't clamp too hard at all. Um, and the pads are very soft. It doesn't crush my ears into the side of my head. Uh, I can wear this for an extremely long period of time. I love it for comfort. The build quality is very bare bones. It's It's got to be lightweight. It's super light. There's nothing to it really. And I think that's good, right? It's supposed to be on your head for long flights. And for that, yeah, I actually think that I would use it for that. Um, but really nothing else, like nothing else. <laughs> it's collapsible. You know, you can fold it up. It comes in a nice a small carry case, which is easy to travel with. So, you know, these would be the perfect travel headphones. I would use them. I would buy them actually, <laughs> um, if not for this channel imbalance issue. There is of course one other shortcoming and it's the same shortcoming that I mentioned in the Accentum review that I did. And it's the same shortcoming that I mentioned in literally every noise canceling headphone review that I do, which is in the app, they don't let you input the specific values that you might want to adjust. Obviously the bass is great, but the filter set here is even more limited for the rest of them compared to even the Sennheiser platform, right? So with this, you get three filters. It's not, it's not good. In my view, that's kind of unacceptable for personalization in an app. I mean, it's nice that you have the app and it's nice that it is in the right spot for the base, but we have to, we have to get past this, uh, you know, this idea that the customer base is dumb. <laughs> Either there's a hardware limitation here or it's a signal that, Bose and all the rest of these companies don't really think that the customer base is intelligent enough to figure out how to, you know, use EQ properly. And maybe they're right. I don't know. But I'd like to think that, you know, it really isn't that hard. Um, and if somebody comes out with uh, a headphone where you have the potential for this, it just seems like such a no brainer to add customizable filters or you know, make it so that you can input the values that you want to adjust. 
Um, or do it the way that AKG did it with the AKG N700 NC Mark II, where you can literally adjust anything you want. It's pretty straightforward, and I don't know if I've ever seen anybody complain about that headphone having too much customizability. So please, please, any noise-canceling headphone manufacturer, please allow us to input the custom values in the app. Allow us to adjust what we want to adjust. Like even if you disagree with me saying, oh, there's too much bass with this headphone or it's too V-shaped or whatever, right? There is no downside to giving more customizability, more personalization options to the user base. Anyways, for some alternatives to this one, like you know, if you're thinking, what else should I buy instead of these? I think you can get other headphones around this price that don't have the channel balance issues, uh, that would be a little bit more you know, tolerable if you're sensitive to channel balance issues. And I think from all the major brands, essentially. So whether you're talking Sennheiser, Sony, even the AirPods Max doesn't have the channel balance issues that this one has, although that has other issues. <laughs> and of course, if you don't need the best noise canceling quality for the price, like if you, if you just need some noise canceling and it doesn't have to be like class leading, you should probably get the AKG N700 NC Mark II. Like that's still what I would get at this price. So once again, in conclusion, it's unfortunate that this one does have this issue, the channel balance issue because if it didn't have these issues, I would probably recommend it as a good noise canceling headphone. It's not the best for sound quality for sure, but it's totally palatable for its you know, overall tuning for the sound signature here. And it's super comfortable and the noise canceling quality is good. So all the rest of it is good. It's just that that issue is such a significant deal breaker that I, I can't recommend it. And that's it for this video. If you guys are interested in learning more about the measurements, once again, there's a video on that linked in the description. And we will, we will be doing more to this measurement platform, this visualization tool that we have here uh, in the coming months to try and improve it, to make it so that it's easier for folks who are used to reading the old style of measurements uh, to make sense of this, uh, this new system as well. And we'll have a couple articles up on headphones.com here shortly if you're still confused about it. But that does it for me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.